Hello. In this video, we'll be looking at the CC aux functions within Codesys and how to use them. So, CC aux is the cross control interface to the display's hardware. So, any CC pilot display. If you want access to the hardware of the display or anything hardware related like, for instance, the screen brightness or the configurable inputs or digital inputs or video, then you need to access that those hardware related components through what we call CC aux. So this will be the first video I make for Codesys. Although I have made a few videos for QT, the first of which is goes over our CC aux platform as a whole and the if we come here to our support site for instance and look at like right here I'm on the XA display but all of our displays have a manual. You'll have a CC aux API description here. So that video talks more about the API in total and all of the different functions available there. But that being said, within Codesys, there is included libraries to access CC aux. And I'll go over how to use those and how to get access to certain hardware functions within Codesys. So, all right, so we've gone through many training videos within Codesys and I'm using training project one which we've used to kind of build up this project throughout a lot of different training videos. If you're just joining us for this video and your project is not built up like this you don't need to worry about any of this other stuff. I'm gonna go over you know what we do here can be done in any project no matter how big or small so there's nothing that we've done previously that uh, is going to prevent you from successfully using CC aux as we go over it here. All right, so actually using CC aux is fairly easy. So we're going to come into the library manager first. And we have some libraries already added to our project pretty much automatically as we add different components. Uh, the libraries that we have added here and the ones you have added shouldn't really matter for this. So what we're going to do is say add library and we have a lot of different ones here. And I believe if we, ah, there we go. So if we click here, we can get a, a more concise view of it. And in this case, to add CC aux, we're going to you click the miscellaneous button, and you'll see CC aux and CC CC SAP. So CC SAP we'll go over in a different video, but this is a library to use that will access our data engine component on the display. So I won't really go into that in this video. The ones we're looking for are CC aux. So we can click advanced here and again go into miscellaneous and see the versions that we're using. So I believe the latest version that we have available is 3544 and that's going to cover all of our X series displays as well as the VC and VA display. So we'll occasionally update the CC aux library to add more functions and um, bring in more displays to it. So just uh, I would if there if it doesn't work for you, uh, if you get any errors, it might be good to make sure you're using the latest versions. So we can double click this and we'll see CC aux is added here into our library list so we can again see the version is 3544 so if you click add library miscellaneous and do not have these libraries here that likely means that your version of codices uh, it won't have them by default so you'll need to acquire the libraries and 
when in my video on installing code assist for the first time you should have already gone through this this uh, process but what we're gonna do on our support site here is click software code assist and there is a Maximatech development environments plugin project archive and that's updated as we get as we update our libraries and different things so we'll update this plugin with additional libraries so if you download this and extract the project archive as is described in one of the the setup videos for codasys then this will give you the ccox libraries that you need so if they are not there then you've either skipped a step or maybe have forgotten to download this plugin. Coming back here, um, we're going to take a look into CCOX. So if we come on our library manager again and find CCOX 3544, which we just added, and we look down here, you'll see all of the different functions that are available. So, you know, with CCOX, we can look at the backlight and control that, um, get some functions on the battery or the buttons or the buzzer, uh, configurable inputs, digital IOs, the light sensor, um, PWM outputs. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna use the buzzer and I actually went through that in the QT video. So I'm gonna do a similar thing but with code assist so let's expand the buzzer and we can see the different functions that we have access to with ccox so just like other libraries in code assist it shows us our inputs and outputs the graphical configuration and then it gives us some documentation so um if we look at for instance the set volume or set frequency. So here we can set the volume um, and this is will return an error if it doesn't su succeed or a zero error success if it works. And then we can set the volume from zero to 63 here in Codasys. And here's a graphical look at it and if we wanted to, for instance, turn the buzzer on, we could use this buzzer buzz or set trigger. And so if we give it a bool true here, our trigger status is true and the buzzer's on. If it's false, it's off. Or the buzzer buzz, as it says here, it buzzes for a specified time where the time period is in milliseconds. So um the buzzer is enabled there so that's for the set trigger so let's use some of these in our project so um we're gonna come to just our main function plc prg here and let's comment out what's here Okay, so looking at our main program, let's just remove these two. We are going to add the buzzer functionality and let's set it so it will turn on every, hmm, how should we do this? Let's, let's just set a button. <clears throat> and I'm just going to create a button. So this is really just for demonstration purposes. So if you're following along on your computer, you don't necessarily need to do this part, but I'm going to create a button and I'm just going to name this buzz. And here in my PLC PRG program, I'm gonna say uh, buzz. 
buzz on off. And this is going to be a bool variable, and it's going to default to false. Oops. There we go. Then I'm just going to come up with a if statement, essentially, and just say if buzz on off is true, then we want to turn the buzzer on. So to do that, we are going to look again into our functions here that we have available. And in this case, let's use the set trigger function. So this is just going to enable it when it's true. So that's easy enough. Um, so buzzer underscore set trigger is what we want. So let's start typing that buzzer underscore set trigger. And it takes in as an input just the trigger. So we can say trigger is equal to buzz on off. So actually in this case, as I'm thinking about it, we don't even need this if statement. We can just link it directly. So when, because our trigger is set to this, when it's true, it's gonna be on, and when it's off, it's gonna be false. So we don't need any if statement. And the only other thing we should do is make an error variable. So, there we go. So we can see in the library function here, the buzzer set trigger gives us an output of this error variable. And we can see within the CC aux library here, there's an error, whoops, not what I wanted. Uh, there's this error variable that describes what each value is. So if it's a zero, it's a success, but you have, it could return different values and those values are described here. So we are going to set error equal to this buzzer. So it will return that. And the last thing I think we need to do is just link this push button to the variable that we set up. So we can say on mouse clicked toggle variable. Let's try that one. Okay, so let's try this out. So I'm gonna go online, log in. So you guys won't be able to see what's on my screen, but I could probably open it here in code assist as well. Um, so it is up on the screen. And if you can hear the buzzer, I've pressed the button and now I'm going to press it again. And it shuts off. So that is what we expect. So I, when I press the button, the buzz on off trigger turns to true and the buzzer turns on. And when I press it again, it turns off. So we could also see that if we were to go to screen one here and I click it here on off. And yeah, so all of that is is done through our CC aux library and just using this set trigger function. So it is is really as simple as that when you <clears throat> bring in this library, you have access to all of these different functions that can either modify or get information about hardware on the display. So, you know, here we can say, get the current intensity of the backlight or set the intensity. Um, you know, here we can get the values of the hard buttons on the VC and VA displays. Um, configurable inputs, we can get and set the configurable inputs to certain modes and get the values for the VC and VA display. 
And also note that some of them are only for specific displays. So for instance, the VC and VA display have configurable inputs, but the other displays do not. So if we look here and float over it, you'll notice it says supported platforms VC and VA because the X series displays don't have don't have uh, configurable inputs. It also will note it here in the descriptions a lot. So the VC has two configurable inputs while the VA has eight configurable inputs. So, you know, make sure to read the documentation and the notes both in here and in the formal documentation. Um, some of them don't say, you know, a, a specific display. So that usually means they're supported by all of the displays. The digital IO, for instance, is only available on the X series displays. And I guess it doesn't necessarily call that out in great detail here too. So, um, you know, some of it is actually in our documentation on our support site. So it'd be good to also browse over that documentation for the CC aux on the display that you're working with. So if you're looking at an XA display to look at the CC aux API descriptions. So you will notice that there are a lot more functions in this API description than are available within Codasys. And that is definitely true. There are, there's only a subset of functions available in Codasys, but we've tried to include the most helpful ones. So if you need a function in Codasys that is not available, yet you see it is available in this document, then you can send us a support ticket for a feature request and we'll look to add it in to the next version of CC Aux within Codasys. Um, but there is quite a bit that you can do. So I recommend you check out all of these functions. Uh, I will note two specific ones. Well, really one specific one that may not be immediately obvious. That's pretty helpful. So, so video I think is pretty obvious. Um, but the shell command here is, is not obvious and it's an addition in the more recent versions of CC Aux, but it's very helpful and it allows you to issue a, a Linux or terminal command from Codasys. So if you want to do something that may not be natively supported within Codasys, but you can do it with a Linux command, uh, a bash command, then you can use these functions here to issue a shell command to the Linux operating system from Codasys. So that can be very helpful in, in certain circumstances. Uh, just a note that it is there and it's sort of outside of the rest of our CC Aux platform, which lets you interface directly with hardware. This is more of an interface to the operating system itself. Um, okay, I think that about does it. Lastly, I'll just say there are instructions or examples on our knowledge base. So if we come here and look into Codasys, there are several examples of projects that use CC Aux. So for instance, this access state of VC hardware buttons will use CC Aux. Um, calling system commands from Codasys, that's what we just talked about, and that uses CC Aux. Uh, there's a whole CC Aux interface example that we can click on here. And this will go over some of the same things that we just talked about. So, and there's different examples posted down there. So I would recommend checking out the examples on the knowledge base because a lot of them use CC Aux. And certainly uh, check out the different functions available. Alternately, you can check out the documentation for our CC Aux 
platform as a whole on the display pages. All right, I think that does it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope it was helpful.